Hi, welcome to the Ortega Path of Enlightenment, or <laughs> the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. My name is George Ortega, and we're recording this on July 24th, 2017. And this is episode number 13, Enlightenment, Intelligence, and Logic. Okay, again, this series is about, like, what enlightenment is, how to become enlightened or more enlightened. And the theme today is that Although this has been historically pretty much ignored, you know, in the literature, Buddhist, Hindu, and all that, you know, to, to, to be enlightened, to become enlightened and more enlightened, you, you have to have a certain level of intelligence. It doesn't have to just like, there are different kinds of intelligences. Uh, for example, there's uh, intelligence related to, to very amazing memory, but specifically the intelligence that's required for this is a very strong logic, or at least the, a logic to see beyond um, what we've been culturally um, determined or conditioned to believe. So, all right, for, for some examples of weak logic, logic um, many years ago, centuries ago, um, people believed that the Earth is at the center of the universe, that, that the sun revolves around us, for example, also. Okay, now, um, you know, interestingly, like we know, science and, and logic tells us that we revolve around the sun. <laughs> um, I happen to be Jewish. Like on, on Fridays, these, uh, these kids from Brooklyn, from a yeshiva there, I guess, they're Jewish kids in a, a yeshiva is like a Jewish school. You know, they all eventually become rabbis. They come into White Plains and they, they ask me to don to fill in, which is this Jewish you know, ritual or whatever. And anyway, we get into this debate, these debates, and apparently these kids are being taught that, that the sun actually does revolve around us and that, that Einstein's relativity demonstrates this. Or the rel I mean, that they just like, they have no grasp of, of, for example, like the effects of gravity and all. So, so that's an example of like, you know, you, you, know, you need a strong logic, you know, to kind of like, especially if you're young, to, to think through a lot of the nonsense that, <laughs> that we adults tell kids. Um, another example of weak logic, um, climate change is not happening, it's not serious, and it's not man-made. Um, interestingly, again, we're, we're recording this on July 24th, and in about four days, Al Gore is going to be um, premiering his sequel to the 2006 An Inconvenient Truth, where he's going to update us on just what's been happening over the last 11 years. And, um, and so we'll, you know, we'll get an assessment. But, but the idea with climate change is like, for example, um, there have been tens of thousands of peer-reviewed studies, you know, on climate change by, by climatologists, geologists, um, biologists, so all these different disciplines, you know, related to climate change, not a single one of these articles, papers, in peer-reviewed professional journals deny climate change, okay? So, so um, you know, and, and um, not a, you know, there's no denial that it's man-made or that, that, I mean, like, that it's serious. I mean, like, we'll, we'll eventually do an episode on this because it's important. But again, to deny that climate change is happening is really to, to not have the, 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 the logic, a logic strong enough, first of all, to, um, to kind of like go to the right sources for your information. And, um, and second, like, well, we'll go into this later um, in terms of like the elements of positive logic. But that's, this is an example of weak logic. Another one is like, for example, this goes back to, again, some of these like go back to religion. Some people actually believe, the Orthodox Jews are one of them, um, that the earth began, the world began around <laughs> 6,000 years ago. And there are, you know, some fundamentalist uh, Christians, for example, I think maybe the, the Jews believe this too, believe that there actually was a serpent, you know, that talked to Adam and Eve in this Garden of Eden, um, failing to realize that, that back when, you know, the Bible was written, you know, a lot of this stuff was not ever meant to be taken literally. If you go across, you know, through the, the, the myths that, that um, preceded them, the Egyptian myths and all, you know, these were all 
taken to be metaphorical, you know, just ways of explaining it through story, whatever. But, but some, you know, in, uh, over the last, oh uh, God, I guess century or so, people have begun to like take this stuff literally. So, you know, this is just uh, another, another example of weak logic, you know, related to religion is the, the rejection of evolution. You know, again, the, the, the world is only 6,000 years ago and, and it started when, you know, and, you know, it was created in seven days and all this stuff. All right, um, a very important one. I mean, I just, I finished a 216 episode series on this um, between 2010 and 2016 or maybe 17, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's this idea, I mean, we, you know, the vast majority of us believe we have this free will, that what we do is up to us. And there's so much evidence, not just like scientific or and logical evidence, but just experiential evidence, you know. We can just like, we can ask ourselves, well, you know, can I think or feel anything I want to, any time I want to, and the answer is no. And that should be enough to tell us that free will is a myth. But like, uh, so again, like, it takes a, well, I mean, uh, to my mind, I don't understand how people don't get this, you know, but it, it takes at least enough logic to, to get that, that, no, we don't experience having a free will. We experience having thoughts come into our minds, but, you know, we don't experience the fact that, that we have any control over these. All right, and um, another, another example of weak logic in a way, is, it's kind of like the, the, this idea that um, God is all good, okay? Um, in, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, we, 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 I'd like to believe that God is all good, okay? I mean, like, maybe through some kind of logic that I don't yet understand, uh, you, know, you know, it's possible to demonstrate that, you know, by a certain kind of, like, definition of good. But, like, you know, basically, essentially, if God, you know, we define God as what controls everything, you know, God is all-powerful, om omnipotent, whatever happens, happens because of God, and certainly not because of we human beings, because we don't have a free will, then, um, then the good we do is certainly attributable to God. It's not that God isn't good at all. There's a lot of good in the world, but that, um, that God is also responsible for every evil ever done for, you know, and, 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 and evil really has, relates to pain, you know, like there was actually no pain on the planet uh, before 300 million years ago. That, that's when the first sentient beings arised, these um, decapods, you know, but the, our planet's been around for four and a half billion years, so, <laughs> and the universe for 13.8, so like, you know, actually, like, there's very little evil and pain, you know, within this um, span of, of the, the age of our universe, which, which is, you know, I guess, uh, gratifying. So, and um, another, another example of weak logic, and this is like as pervasive as this free, uh, belief in free will. People believe that um, evolution, you know, these mutations that are responsible for evolution uh, occur randomly. All right, so first we have to like, acknowledge that the Darwin never said that, okay? In his Origins of Species, the word random and the concept, this idea that they occur randomly was, is, isn't in there. You know, he, he basically admitted he didn't know how they occurred, but like somehow s somebody added this to this. And so like randomly means like without reason at all. Okay, so like now, I mean, they, some people get confused by this. They say, well, you know, like evolution uh, occurs according to ra um, natural selection, meaning like this, the, the fittest of, of the species or whatever survive, the less fit don't survive. But I mean, that's, that's not taken into account that there has to be a physiological difference between those animals within the species that do survive and those that don't, and that's not accountable to, um, to natural selection, because again, there has to be a, a prior natural selection um, differentiation between the two. And if, if you, you try to assert that it's, it's random, it happens in all, imagine like, for example, you, because um, these mutations that, that um, change species, you know, and they ultimately lead to what happens in natural selection, they occur over thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of years over 
you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of steps, maybe billions of steps, who knows? And so like, imagine like, let's say you take, you want to go to from here to California, right? And you're going to try to do this randomly. So like every, every step you take is a random step, right? Meaning you could either like go toward California, away from it, you know, up toward Canada or down toward Mexico. And so like, you know, if you start with that as like this idea of randomness, that there's nothing actually controlling it, then you would never reach California. I'm sorry, because like, you know, you might actually be, you know, in, in the Atlantic Ocean someplace or, you know, because like with each step, again, they're like, they're, millions, hundreds of millions, whatever, you know, the, there's the, always the possibility, this, this, it's not just a four-way possibility, north, west, south, east, it's like 360 degrees of just ending up anywhere. So anyway, there's no way randomness, you know, can take you, you know, whatever. So like basically the idea is that um, evolution is guided by an intelligence, by a, um, Directions. I mean, DNA. DNA has like this. It's it's, a, it's a, like a com computer code that you know, as with our computers, it's programmed, and there's a there's a kind of like a purpose and a direction to it. All right. So anyway, that's another example of of weak logic that, that people assume that, that that things can actually happen without you know another meaning of, of, of randomness, of strong ma randomness, is like that things occur not caused, that they happen, they're just not, you know, nothing causes them, they just happen. So again, these are like, when you think about it, um, nothing happens at random. This is something actually, there's a Greek, a Greek uh, person, um, Lysippius, I believe, Greek philosopher, he said, you know, nothing happens at random, but everything for a reason by necessity, so it's not like something, this is new, but again, you, it requires a relatively strong logic to understand, uh, you know, that even, you know, even in evolution, mutation is not random, even though people refer to it. It's, it's like, it's directed, it's guided by some intelligence, some purpose, some force. All right, so, so basically, so it takes, you know, kind of like a certain amount of logic to, because like part of enlightenment is you got to get reality right, okay? If, if you believe you have a free will, you know, <laughs> you're, you've gotten reality completely wrong. And, um, and, you know, like, what happens is when you get reality wrong, <laughs> enlightenment is also related to, for example, um, morality, doing right, not doing wrong. And you really need a, a, a proper understanding of, of reality to get this stuff right. For example, if somebody does something hurtful, okay, and you believe in free will, you're going to believe, oh, they're evil, you know, they're, they're, they're bad, and they deserve to, um, to be punished. So you might want to punish them, and that would be wrong to a certain extent. I mean, punishment does help to, to kind of like mold our behavior, but punishment for the sake that they did it and they deserve it, that's just morally wrong because you're attributing something to them that's not at all under their control. It's not their fault. All right, so now... I want to go through, I guess, like the elements of, of what strong logic is. You know, what, what, you know in order to, to understand things accurately, to, to have this attribute of, of enlightenment that's necessary, what, what, how, how does this come about? All right, so the first thing is that you need to be objective. You know, for example, I would love to believe that, that I have a free will, okay? It would be great to have a free will. I could, like, be blissed out every moment of every day. Um, it'd be great to believe that God is good or that, that we're never going to die or whatever, you know? Like, but no, like, objectivity means, like, you look at the evidence, at the facts, at the logic and, and all this, and you, you base your ass assessment absent of your desires, absent of how you want things to be, okay? So um, that's crucial. That's crucial, and so like, and you also have to like, it's objectivity against what we're conditioned to believe. You know, we may be taught certain things in, um, in school and by our parents and all, and you know, I think it's probably wise to accept much, uh, probably most of the things we're taught as, as true, as, as not just true, but as good and, you know, helpful. But again, you have to have the logic to differentiate between that in between what makes no sense, you know, like free will and all. Okay, um, you want to have an appreciation of probability, okay? So, in other words, like, if there's, 
not one peer-reviewed scientific study out of tens of thousands that denies climate change, <laughs> the probability that, that climate change is not happening is like very minimal, okay? So like, you know, you, this, this probability is, is like, it relates to like, for example, like let's say you, um, you had something that you wanted to kind of like, some, some kind of illness, some, some symptom or something, right? Okay, you're not gonna go to an electrician or um, a lawyer or an architect for this because you're, you're gonna go to a doctor, the probability is much higher than a doctor is gonna know what's going on than you know, somebody from some other profession. So basically, all right, so probability is, is, is important in, in um, this strong logic stuff. Okay, um, another element of strong logic is you, you want to have a respect for science. I mean, like, you know, the, the fact that you're watching this means that there's a science, you know, beyond what I can, you know, understand. It's so complicated. I mean, uh, essentially, this science is built up of, of so many kinds of elements and so many different kinds of disciplines, you know, physics, uh, chemistry, um, biology, that, that nobody really understands at all. But... But we have this collection of, of knowledge, of, of, of empirical evidence, and, 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 and so like, you know, y you, need to, you need to respect this, this, this body of science, this system of understanding, and you also need to respect the, the, um, the demands of logic. Again, if, if we define free will, for example, as our being able to think or do anything we'd like any time we want, you know, that's the ba basic definition. And we, you know, then put that to the test and ask ourselves, well, wait a minute, can I be as good a person as I want every time I want, any time I want? And the answer is no. That by itself, excluding everything else, is enough to tell you that you don't have a free will, and that's logic. In other words, like, you know, um, we, I guess we'd have to do uh, a more in-depth show on what exactly logic is, because that, that can get really complicated. Some, some of this is intuitive, it's, it's observational, it's based on um, <coughs> cause and effect, what, you know, something happens, you interpret some meaning from it. But, but essentially, you need to have this, this respect for logic. Okay. You need to, all right, in today's world, what happened to my second camera? I've been going back and forth. Where's this? I got a middle camera. Maybe it's not on. All right, whatever. Um, all right, the ability in, in today's world, uh, we need to determine real news from fake news. There is so much nonsense out there in, in the news. I mean, Trump is, is denying climate change. <laughs> he called it a, a, a hoax by, the, by China, okay, for whatever reason. So, like, you know, you, you need to, like, you, you need to understand where you're getting this information from, you know. If, if you're going, for example, with climate change to the scientists, to, to the, especially the climatologists, you know, who, who specialize most directly in climate change, and you, know, you not only go to them, but you don't go to the popular science magazines, you go to the peer-reviewed journals, you go to like, there's a, an organization called the IPCC that is the author, authoritative organization about this. Most people don't know about it. It's called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's a United Nations-based organization comprised of about 120 countries, about 300 scientists that review all these empirical you know, findings about climate change, and then they uh, assess you know, <laughs> their validity. So you, know, you, you need to go to the right sources. You can't go to Fox News. You can't go to, to you know, a politician or most politicians, you know, for example. All right, so again, there's a lot of like nonsense out there. You know, half, half of the United States believes literally that the Earth was created you know, 6,000 years ago and there was a serpent that talked to God and also like, you know, talk about nonsense. All right, uh, you need to have an open mind. You need to kind of like, um, for example, oh, let me see something for it. All right, for example, like I'm not, I want a, a few examples of this. Uh, evolution, Darwin's evolution. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that like that who we are as human beings, you know, is the result of this, you know, evolutionary change that spanned millions of years, 
and that we are, are you know, ancestor is, is a rodent, you know, this, this tree shrew. I mean, that, that's so counterintuitive. So you need to have an open mind. Who would have thought, for example, that like, you know, in physics describes this phenomenon known as entanglement. And, and in theory, and this actually has been demonstrated by experiment, and it could be just extended to, um, to this example. In theory, you can have one particle at one end of the universe, and it's communicating with the particle that it's entangled with at the other end of the universe pretty much simultaneously, thousands of times faster than the speed of light. Um, and and, and that, that's, that is like bizarre, you know, it's called non-locality. So like, but again, like, you know, the, um, you have to have a mind open enough to, to kind of like go beyond commonsensical notions of what things should be to then like examine the evidence, you know, the scientific evidence, the mathematical evidence, the physical evidence. Um, all right, so open mind. Um, you need to be able to appreciate the implications of, of certain principles. Like there's this principle, this law of cause and effect. Nothing happens that hasn't been caused, okay? So what does that mean? Like apply it again to our human will. <laughs> we make a decision, okay? So that decision has a cause. Now again, everything has a cause. So there's going to be a cause to, our, to the cause of our decision. And there's going, to, there's going to be a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause. And then you, you have this chain of cause and effect regressing back, cause by cause, moment by moment, to before we were born, certainly before the, the planet was created, you know, to who knows how far back, you know, before the Big Bang, presumably. So again, so you have to like these, these the, you have to kind of like reach extensions of, of, um, of um, principles. You have to like come up with, you know, if this, then that. Now, some people will say, like, all right, we don't have a free will, big deal. You know, the, um, it doesn't matter. If everything's predetermined, then it doesn't matter whether we know or not that everything is predetermined and we don't have a free will. No, that's like, again, you have to, like, look deeper into it. You have to, like, have the, the, the proper appreciation of the implications, for example, that we don't have a free will. If we have, don't have a free will um, and we know it, then when we do things that aren't, aren't necessarily totally right, or other people do things that aren't right, we're going to be a lot more compassionate, a lot more understanding. In other words, how we view the world in terms of what, what is and what isn't is going to affect our reaction to what happens. Um, so, all right. Um, we need to, again, I guess, uh, have the ability to challenge tradition and authority. I think we've been going through this all along, you know. Um, you can't blame the, the, you know, the ancients for believing that there was a god of, of you know, thunder and a god of rain and all, and you can't blame, for example, people many centuries ago, several millennia ago, for believing the earth is flat, because it looks flat, okay? You can't blame, really, people for, for believing that the sun revolves around the earth. But, you know, what happens is, like, you know, we have this science that progresses, fine, you know, like, so, you know, we, we have this kind of, like, respect for tradition and authority, but we also, again, have to, like, go against it. And even, like, you know, this, this um, challenge to tradition and authority even goes to, like, for example, the standard view in science is that mutation is random in evolution. And the standard belief, that we're, it's not actually a standard belief, but nobody wants to talk about it. It's like, people, like, want to believe in free will, and there's various disciplines like biology, neuroscience, psychology, and philosophy that should um, understand this. A lot of them do, actually. Um, but, but they don't, you know, they don't want to face it. You don't hear about it. So, all right. Um, so, again, the, so you, you need to challenge a tradition and authority because, um, because we're constantly in, in, a, um, in a process of getting things more and more correct. You know, each generation, each, you know, millennia, whatever. All right. Um, Part of, you know, this logic, you know, that, that's so important to um, enlightenment is you need to understand what's most important in life, okay? Right now we have all this technology directed to, like, you know, cooler and cooler smartphones. Um, to a great extent, um, ignoring, for example, that, that happiness is what we really want. You know, we are hardwired to seek pleasure, avoid pain. Happiness is our strongest desire. This isn't opinion. You know, they've... they've 
they've asked hundreds of thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of people this question, and like the number one answer is always happiness. Yet, um, yet we don't have like, for example, we don't teach our kids happiness in school and stuff like that. So like, you know, en enlightenment, you know, logic applied to enlightenment is like, hey, if, if like, if happiness is what we most want, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer that we should be learning how to <laughs> become happier, that we should teach our kids. The same with morality. Morality, John Locke defined goodness as that which creates happiness. So, and to a great extent, that's, that's accurate. It's not completely accurate, whatever, but, but if, if the better we are as people, the happier we'll be, you know, we should again, like, and this isn't just about teaching this. I mean, like, you know, right now we have these supercomputers that are being, um, applied to chemistry, computational chemistry, where like instead of doing a thousand experiments, you input this uh, data into the computer and all of a sudden it will give you the, the probabilities and indications without having to do all the work. So I mean we should be applying this, this powerful computing power to developing like a, a pill that you take one each morning and you'll be happy for the rest of the day, you know, safe, non-addictive, whatever, and something also to strengthen our um, conscience. Okay. Um, so, and lastly, because we're running out of time, is that um, we need to have enough information to evaluate whether something is right or not. Like with climate change, you know, you, know, you don't want to just watch one movie. And I mean, if you watch The Inconvenient Truth, you pretty much got it, because that, that really was a solid film. But basically, um, you want to consult a lot of sources. You want to like, you know, there's a lot of books written on this. So, you know, you don't want to like certainly just rely just on, on the, the mass media that, you know, a reporter, think about it, a reporter investigates something, they're usually not experts in it. And so, uh, whatever. All right. So, all right. I think that's all we have time for. I hope you have an understanding of how like to be enlightened, to become more enlightened requires this kind of intelligence that's associated with strong logic. All right, in the future we'll explore other topics related to how to become enlightened or more enlightened. Thanks for watching.